it's important to talk about toxic friendships. I've had toxic friends and I've been a toxic friend, but how do we recognize what is a toxic friendship and how do we stop being that toxic friend? A toxic friendship is similar to a toxic romantic relationship. Oftentimes we don't actually realize we're in one. And when we do start noticing that the relationship is toxic, a lot of times we don't want to leave it because we don't want to do we don't want to deal with confrontation or we don't want to feel bad about leaving a friend because maybe we think they need us. But this is negatively impacting us. This is draining us and we have to get out of that relationship. If your friend makes you feel like trash about yourself, is constantly competing with you, is constantly criticizing you or makes you feel uncomfortable, that is not a good friendship. That is a toxic friendship and you have to get out of that relationship. Common traits of a toxic friend, according to this Huffington Post article that I'm gonna link down here for you guys, is they are leeches. They are freeloaders. They are taking more than they are giving. They're envious. They're bitter. Instead of being happy for you, they're like, oh, I deserve that. I don't know why you have it. They are constantly critiquing you. They are selfish. They are self-centered. These are all negative traits. And if you're thinking, oh my God, my so-called best friend has all of these characteristics, Girl, you need to run. You need to leave that friendship. Leaving a friendship is hard. Breaking up with a friend is painful, but you have to be honest about it. The easy way to break up with a friend is to ghost them, but ghosting someone doesn't accomplish anything. You have to be willing to have that conversation with them, whether it be in person, via text, via email, and it might seem kind of harsh to break up with someone via text or via email, but ultimately you have to go down the route that is positive for you. Most people do not change and most people won't change if they don't know what they're doing is wrong. So you have to be willing to love yourself more and walk away from that relationship. When you have that conversation, like I said, whether it be via text or a phone call or in person, there is no reason to be nasty. You don't have to be like, hey, you're an asshole. I don't want to be friends with you anymore. You do have to be honest though, you know, step one, recognize that friendship you've had, thank them for it. Let them know, I appreciate the friendship we've had throughout the past years, but it's time for me to let go of that friendship. And you have to explain to them why you're letting go of that friendship. Tell them, you know what? I haven't felt really happy in this friendship. I feel uncomfortable around you. I feel like I'm constantly on my guard and this isn't good for me. Maybe distance is the right move. And I know girls hate when a guy says, oh, I think we need some distance. But in terms of this friendship, you do need distance. You need to distance yourself away from someone who is causing you pain, someone who is making you feel bad about yourself, someone who is bringing you down. And then the final thing is to move forward. Their reaction will give you the indication of how toxic they are. If they decide that they're going to blow up and get nasty with you, then you know that you need to run away from that person. Don't bother responding. Just say, okay, I'm sorry you feel that way and walk away. But maybe they're really understanding about it. And if that's the case, then perhaps in the future you can rekindle that friendship once you've both taken that time to grow in your own ways. This is very personal for me because a few years ago I received one of those text messages. I was the toxic friend and I didn't even realize it. And it's not that I was bringing her down or self-centered or a nasty friend, but we were in very different parts of our lives. I was in a very self-destructive party all the time. I just want to have fun zone. And she was focusing on her career. Our goals were not aligned. So every time we hung out, basically she would end up with a hangover and she would just wish she had stayed at home or wish that we hadn't just spent all of our time partying. I was not contributing to her growth as an individual, and that's why she didn't want to be my friend anymore. And she wasn't nasty about it. She just said, hey, you know what? I think we should go in different ways. I wish you the best. When I got that message, it really hurt, and I didn't really understand it. And it wasn't until a few years later that I could look back at it and understand why she ended that friendship. If your friends are not contributing to your growth, they are toxic friends. And it's okay to have friends that you just partied with or friends that you just goal set with, but your friends can't constantly be bringing you down. If all you do is get drunk and do drugs and party and spend money, those friends are enablers. You can't have those people in your life because they are going to bring you down. And if you are that person, then you need to reassess what you're doing and wonder, am I positively impacting the life of my friends? 
Am I positively impacting my life? You need to be able to reassess yourself and reassess your friendships. Everything that you are doing should be contributing to your growth. And I'm not saying that you can never drink or you can never do the things that you do to have fun. But there is that balance. There is that sense of moderation. You have to be honest with yourself. Is going out every Thursday through Saturday good for me? Is getting drunk every Thursday to Saturday good for me? Is spending $100 a night on alcohol good for me? The people who surround you, whether you like it or not, are a big indication of what your life is going to turn out like. You have to surround yourself with people who have similar goals to you. You have to be aligned. You have to be growing. You have to be working towards things. Yes, have fun. Yes, go out. Yes, get lit. But we gotta work, we gotta hustle, we have shit to do. A toxic friend will drag you to the club the night before an 8 a.m. interview and make you miss that interview. A good friend will say, hey, let's do dinner, keep it chill, be home by 10, and make sure that you're in bed early enough to crush that interview. But a best friend will say, girl, no, keep your ass at home, you have an interview tomorrow, I want you to crush it. She'll let you crush that 8 a.m. interview, and after you crush it, then you celebrate. Know the difference. A best friend will want you to thrive, a best friend will be supportive of your goals, a best friend will encourage you. Surround yourself with people who want you to grow. Surround yourself with people who bring out the best in you. Surround yourself with people that you can have just as much fun getting lit with on a Friday as you can going to yoga on a Tuesday. Those things matter. Be selective about who you spend your time with and who you consider a friend, but also make sure that you have something to offer. You have to put into your friendships just as much as you take out. I want the women in my life who I consider my friends now to be my friends for the rest of my life because they encourage me, they support me, they build me up, and I want them to feel that way about me too. That's why this year, that is one of my priorities. That's something that I wanted to learn about and that's why I did an episode on it. So I hope that you guys learned something. I did, I'm excited to implement that into my 2020. But I also wanna hear back from you. What are your ideas on adult friendship? How do you prioritize being a good friend? What effort do you make in your friendships or what efforts do you think that you could better in your friendships? Next week, I'm talking about romantic relationships. I wanna be a better girlfriend. I want my boyfriend to be a better boyfriend. How am I gonna do that? I don't know. It will probably start with me learning how to stop saying I'm fine when I'm not fine. We made it through January and you guys made it a great month for me. You helped me hit my goal of 50 subscribers. I'm hoping to break 150 this month in February. Let's see if we can do that. If you enjoy my content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. You can check out my blog. I am linking it below or follow me on Instagram at Sophia Eats Pizza. Thanks guys. I will see you next week so we can talk about love. Bye guys.